Welcome to the story of the greatest music festival disaster of all time, the Fire Festival. This was an event that was supposed to be the ultimate luxury getaway on a tropical island, but instead, it turned into a complete disaster. Let's dive in and find out what happened. The Fire Festival was founded and organized by entrepreneur Billy McFarland alongside Robert J. Rule. McFarland had previously launched a company called Magnuses, which offered exclusive perks and experiences to young professionals. He envisioned the Fire Festival as the ultimate extension of this concept, a luxury music festival that would be attended by the world's elite. The vision was grandiose, to say the least. The festival was marketed as a once-in-a-lifetime experience, a chance to escape the stresses of everyday life and party on a private island in the Bahamas. The promotional materials featured private jets and yachts beachfront villas, also meals prepared by celebrity chefs and the world's biggest models and influencers promoting it. They decided to take an island in the Bahamas that previously owned by the famous drug lord Pablo Escobar, with a condition that there would be no mention of Pablo Escobar in any marketing material. The festival will be on a deserted island in the Bahamas, and they were confident that they could do it, when in reality, they really had no idea what they are doing. Also, the festival production team was only given about eight weeks to plan the entire festival when organizers typically start at least 12 months out to plan any type of music festival. So do you think that they can handle this? After leasing the island from the owners, they began promoting the festival. In order to bring their idea to fruition, the fire team assembled a team of experienced event planners and marketing experts and social media influencers. They worked tirelessly to create a buzz around the festival, using Instagram, Twitter, and other social media platforms to generate excitement and anticipation. The promotions began with a video on the island that featured many of the top supermodels and influencers in the world, like Bella Hadid and Hailey Bieber and many other huge name models. And many more, they posted videos on Instagram posting about how insane the Fire Festival was going to be. Also, many other influencers were paid a lot of money to post this orange square on Instagram tagging the Fire Festival account. This would quickly blow up the Fire Festival account and get tons of people talking about it because all of these big names influencers were promoting it. And one of those influencers to post the orange square was Kendall Jenner, who was actually paid a mind-blowing $250,000 for just that one post. Even so, during the festival promotion video, McFarland made a mistake, saying that the island was owned by Pablo Escobar previously, which was the one thing he was told not to mention. As a result, the owner quickly cancelled all the agreements. So now there were only about six weeks until the festival was scheduled to happen, and they had to find a whole different island for it. They find one located near Sandals Resort on a great exile. Since it was supposed to be located in an isolated development, the location was an abandoned development site with no buildings and definitely no villas. On social media, they simply altered the map in a way that still made it look like the festival is taking place on Escobar Island. Now, the problem solved. So how much does the ticket cost? In the beginning, the cost of the tickets ranged from $500 to $1,500, and the VIP package cost $12,000. They were promised luxury villas to stay in while attending. Hitting that subscribe and like button is like planting a little seed of kindness. And who knows, the little seed might grow into something amazing. Because of the lack of funding, they hired a team of chefs for about 1 million, even though the budget was expected to be in the range of 6 million. Guests were told they would get food prepared by celebrity chefs, yet nothing of this kind happened. So
So, despite the fact that the festivals of liberation and organization were not going well at all, their marketing strategy had been successful as they quickly sold out of tickets to an estimated 5,000 people. With only two weeks to the event, there were new problems and obstacles popping up every single day, and they realized they wouldn't be able to give the guests the villas to stay in. So they changed their plans and settled for tents instead. Very far from the originally advertised luxury villas, so they began putting these tents up all over the site. Then they hired hundreds of local workers to build the festival, and he agreed to pay them after the festival. So they were now racing literally around the clock and spending huge amounts of cash to solve all the problems that they kept facing. In the weeks leading up to the festival, they also had to work on getting the actual music artists to perform. It was actually quite simple to attract some major names because they advertised it's an industry-changing festival on an isolated island in the Bahamas. Then they ended up getting a lot of musicians that are not cheap. Billy was a great entrepreneur who was also amazing at fundraising since he knew how to convince investors and sell items, which would be easy when you are just lying to them. So Billy was able to bring in more investors every day in order to pay off the next problem. Now the production team insisted once more that Billy begin posting actual photos of the tents on the festival site because the guests would find out sooner or later and to let people actually see what they are in for and they let them decide if they still wanted to come or not. But Billy disliked once more and effectively fired everyone who who advised him against this. And to raise more money quickly, Billy created the fire ban, which allowed visitors to deposit money onto a parcelet that would work as their wallet for the weekend, basically making the event cashless. The digital parcelets had never been tested and probably wouldn't work too well with the island internet connection. The bad GT suggested that the attender should deposit $300 to $500 for every day they plan to stay. The only purpose of doing this is to keep money in Billy's pocket. And after this, guests start questioning about everything, about the festival on social media on Instagram and Facebook, such as the flight details, where they will stay, and people start to be very angry, and they blow up in the comments. Then the Fire Festival account began deleting these negative comments, then they turned off their comments. And one day before the arrival of the guests, they still didn't have enough beds, and despite all the warnings and the problems that happened, we refused to cancel it. Canceling was not an option for Billy. On the promised day, the flights arrived to take the guests on the island, but not in the private jets as advertised. Instead, they brought a huge commercial plans with the Fire Festival logo, and when they arrived, Billy decided to redirect them all near to the beach restaurant, where they stayed there for about six hours. Additionally, the guests didn't pay for anything because the experience was supposed to be all inclusive. Finally, the bus began transferring the guests on the campsite, and all of them were surprised about what they are saying. So they all went to the Blue House, which was the festival headquarters and waited for a few hours while drinking alcohol. At this time, everyone is confused, drunk, and angry. So they bought the bags in two large containers and ordered everyone to find their bags. Then Billy stepped in and told everyone who had ordered a villa to go and get a tent. And a lot of them stayed without a place to stay in. Also, a lot of them is missing their bags. What became famous was this tweet about the cheese sandwich that they bring as a meal. Then all the singers begin canceling. The next morning, all the media was talking about the fire festival, and it was cancelled on the first day, leaving guests stranded on the island for a day. Guests had to rely on social media to try and get help from the outside world. Eventually, the US NPC got involved, and they helped to organize flights off the island. Fire festival founder Billy was arrested and charged with multiple counts of frauds. He was sentenced to six years in prison and ordered to pay 26 million in restitution to his victims. The fire festival short lesson is the value of being honest and upfront in business. The festival organizers fooled their consumers, harmed their reputation, and eventually led to the event's failure by over-promising and under-delivering. This is a reminder that transparency and openness are critical in developing consumer trust and reputation. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button 
and subscribe for more content like this. Also, check out my previous video about the KFC founder's incredible journey. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next one.